All right, all right. A conversation that we don't want to have about the new sweeping anti-constitutional, anti-Second Amendment, anti-freedom, anti-liberty gun ban and registration scheme enacted by the Illinois government. This is Mickey with Kerry Trainer, Drew behind the editing desk and cameras. You know, before I talk about this, a little background. Drew and I met involved in politics, the things that we worked on, we believed in. Uh, I did not come into this community as like a gun guy or like an influencer. We did things that we believed in that mattered. Some of the things I'm gonna talk about in this discussion are not the things that other channels are bringing up. Uh, I'm gonna talk about this piece of crap, piece of legislation. I'm gonna talk about some of the people behind it. I'm gonna talk about how to change it. So Drew and I got involved in politics, didn't know each other, we hooked up on a campaign, and the reason that I was involved in politics is I was very much disgusted in my state that since 1968 made it impossible to carry a firearm for self-protection. In 1968, something else happened, and it was the National Firearm Act. After Kennedy was assassinated, Congress took, took over and created the National Firearms Act, which banned all types of firearm ownership and created a lot of what we now know with the ATF, uh, things like uh, registration for suppressors and junk like that, as well as uh, what led up to current day stuff where you and I go buy a gun. And for those of you that don't realize it, there is things like background checks, a 4473 form that is filled out every time somebody walks into a gun store to buy a gun. A background check is done through the NICS instant crime system. In my state of Illinois, there is a superfluous background check already done uh, by the state police. So we've got two here in Illinois. We've also got a product called a FOID card, a firearm owner identification card. There's a few other states which such a thing. So let's talk about politics for a minute. There's a difference between politics and government. Politics is the theater. It's the business side of government. And what happens is politicians, career scumbags, decide that they're going to make a life out of the theater, the theater of government. That is something different. For example, I have a friend, his name's Derek. Derek's a professional and he is a city manager. Politics has nothing to do with his job. His job is basically the CEO or being the CEO of a city. So he's a city manager, right? He manages the business, the day-to-day -day operations of government, how the bills get paid, all that good stuff, how the, the different departments are managed and how they communicate. Then you have people like city council members, uh, mayors, and they play, can play the game of politics. Why I'm telling you this is as we get bills like this, uh, in Illinois, California, other such places. And maybe it's not even gun related. It could be something else. Remember one thing about a politician. Their number one goal is to get re-elected, okay? So let's look at this piece of legislation. Let's start with the name of the piece of legislation. It is called Protect Illinois Communities Act. Protect Illinois Community Act. Politics is sales and marketing, running a campaign, which I did a lot of, so back to my initial part of this presentation, Drew was a basically behind the scenes gunslinger for campaigns. I managed campaigns, raised funds, I was the vice chair of a political party, I was the president of a non-for-profit called the Right to Carry Association, and volunteered, wasn't paid for any of these things. That wasn't the goal. My goal was to change laws. So I sat down and I said, who's important? Sheriffs, state representative, governors, state's attorneys. And we're going to come back to that, why that's important. So I began helping in campaigns to get those people elected. And we won a lot. Protect Illinois Community Act. Right there, we have created a narrative where if you're not in favor of this act, you're not in favor of protecting the communities of Illinois. It's a play on the hearts of the listener, of the voter, right? What's it do? Well, it bans assault weapons. And in this bill, the state decided to classify what is an quote unquote assault weapon. It bans magazines. It also gives the police teeth to strip people of gun rights basically super red flag uh, situations. 
it's easy enough for you to go read about this bill, so I'm not gonna play lawyer and try to tell you the nuts and bolts of it. What I wanna talk about is how these things happen, like I said, and how we get rid of them. Who voted for it? Well, our Illinois House, 68 voted for, 41 voted against. The Senate, 34 for, 20 against. No matter if you're in this state or another, look that stuff up. Find out who voted for anti-constitutional bills. Then, let's get those people out of office. What they did is they violated their oath. When a politician, a I don't want to say politician, when an elected official uh, from a city council to president swears in, they swear an oath to uphold the Constitution, the rules, the agreement that we have together. We'll come back to that. So back to the narrative of this protect Illinois community. Well, what's it for? It's to stop gun violence. Newsflash, assholes. Guns don't create violence. Just like uh, my pocket knife doesn't cut me. Just like my hammer and saw don't build this table. I build this table. The hammer and saw are tools. The pocket knife is a tool. A, a kitchen instrument doesn't make me a meal. I make the meal. I use the tool. Some people hear this and they go, that's just you mincing words and trying to play word games. Not at all. There has never been a firearm in the history of mankind that hurt somebody. Somebody, someone, some human used the firearm either negligently, errantly, or on purpose to cause injury or harm to another. That's a fact. There is this new narrative. Doctors are now involved. The doctors in Illinois, there's a bunch of, of, of doctors from big hospitals that see a lot of victims of violence. And they're calling for this law. They're calling for these type of laws. Here's the problem in Illinois and many other places. We passed a law last year. It's called the Safety Act. And even before this happened, our state's attorneys, our judges, our juries have been letting criminals back out on the street time and time and time and time again. Here's a challenge for you. The next time that you see somebody that's been arrested, uh, or killed or shot by police uh, that was under arrest or, or was in the commission of a crime, look at this person's history and you are going to find out over and over and over again that these people involved in this violence were either priorly, prior convictions and out early on parole or let out on bond or let out without bond for something very violent. I have many friends, law enforcement officers, who risk their neck on special teams to go out and collect these violent felons. Whether or not you agree with what I'm about to say is a fact. They go risk their, their life, their safety, to collect these violent felons, and then we the people let them back out. You say, well, I didn't do it. Yeah, you did. Here's the synopsis of this discussion. Piece of shit legislation like this happens because you and I allow it. You might say, I didn't allow anything. Well, by apathy, by not being involved, you did allow it. I'm really glad though that part of this bill includes registration of firearms, a registration of the guns that I own because the criminals now will have to register their guns. Of course, you see the sarcasm. Yes, there is a registry that is required. You have one year to register your firearms. And of course, the criminals are going to do that, right? They're going to jump right on registering those guns. We know that's bullshit. Let's change gears. When I say it's our responsibility, I mean that. I don't mean, I'm not saying that with some tongue-in-cheek humor. I'm not saying it from some altruistic viewpoint. It is our responsibility. In 1776, 56 men put pen to paper on the Declaration, swearing a blood oath, their sacred honor, they said. They said that by putting pen to that document, to that parchment, they swore a sacred oath of honor between them, and not one of them wavered from that. I have this idea in my head that that day they picked up a load, a load of liberty a load that must be carried. Imagine this, if you had a pile of dirt 
of firewood, of some product like that. You can figure out whatever you want it to be. If you wanted that pile of dirt, firewood, gravel to be moved from here over to here on a piece of property, thinking about it, talking about it, writing about it, dreaming about it, doesn't move the dirt. At some point, you need to take a shovel, need to take your hands and start picking up whatever that product is, putting it in a wheelbarrow, putting it in a, in a pickup truck bed and physically moving it and unloading it. It takes effort, work, deeds. Facta non verba is one of the phrases that we use at Carry Trainer. Facta non verba is Latin for deeds, not words. Words are important, we're talking right now, but action is required. Nobody has ever done anything with words alone. At some point, you must act. This load of liberty has been carried by man and woman for decade after decade after decade after decade. Until now, that load is in our hands, or it's not. You might think, you might say, you might believe that you don't have a voice, that you don't have any power. And in saying and believing that, what you are literally doing is tying your hands and feet and you are relinquishing any power. Here's a fact that I believe, I don't care who agrees with me. I am we the people. I have the power to move mountains. I believe that you have the exact same power. I believe that you can change who your governor is, who your mayor is, who your sheriff is. Maybe you could become one of those things. I believe because we've done it over and over again, we have passed sweeping legislation We've been involved in cases that have gone on to high courts. It can be done. Is stuff easy? Nope. Nothing that's worth doing is usually easy. Nothing that is hard is usually taken up by people. When I was running the Right to Carry Association, we were involved with an organization called Illinois State Rifle Association, uh, which is one of the largest state groups in the country. A very dear friend of ours, Valinda Rowe, who runs an organization called Illinois Carry, all non for profit. Most of these people are not paid, just as I was not. Valinda was influential in the passage of concealed carry in Illinois. Not only did she help educate people, not only did she help to get support for the bill, but she was involved in things like getting buses together to bring thousands of people, thousands of people to the Capitol. This is like grunt work, right? It's like moving that dirt. It's not the pretty work of being up on stage. It's not the pretty work of getting the cameras on you and being in the newspaper. You know who does that shit? Scumbag politicians. People like Valinda that went out there and ground it out and still to this day are grinding it out, moving, carrying that load on your behalf. There's people like this all over. Thankless jobs. I did a podcast with her a number of years ago. You can go listen to it. But the reason I bring her up is that is what's important. So here in Illinois, people like Valinda, the Illinois State Rifle Association and others have done things month after month, year after year, thanklessly. And we would see who's coming to these events like iGold, Illinois Gun Owner Lobby Day. It's the biggest event of its kind in the nation. I think maybe there was one in Virginia that surpassed it. Thousands of people, though, have come to our capital year after year for Illinois Gun Owner Lobby Day. Well, we looked at and started running polls in polling data on how many gun owners there were in the state of Illinois versus how many were actively involved. And we created some different me metrics for what actively meant. Those metrics were things like helping get candidates elected, helping to educate the public, actively engaging with finances, with time, with energy to protect and defend the Second Amendment. That's not posting crap on Facebook. That's not talking about it. It's doing. Do you know how many people in the state of Illinois out of the millions of gun owners helped? If you said one to possibly 2%, you'd be accurate. I believe that that's probably accurate across most of the country. I believe it's accurate because that time and again, that statistical number of one to 2%, it bears out when you look at organizations like churches, like gyms, you look at organizations like school groups, you look at organizations like political groups, you look at any type of organization and you're usually gonna find that it's one to 2% actually doing the work. Go to your school. 
one one to two percent of the moms and dads are the ones that are helping with PTA and all that kind of stuff. Look at church groups. It's one to two percent of the people that are there cleaning up, doing the stuff. Same with the gym. This is human nature. Most people are content to sit on the sidelines. Most people are content to talk, to complain, to do nothing. So if you came to this video and you were hoping that you were going to hear me rant and rave about the bullshit that our state has passed, I'm really going to not rant and rave at all. Instead, I'm going to remind you of your duty, your duty to protect and uphold liberty. Our forefathers handed it to us. People often quote people like Jefferson and Franklin. Franklin said, it's yours if you can keep it, talking about liberty. These little cute quips were not cute quips. They were people that dedicated their life to the cause of liberty. I have visited numerous times the graves of many of our founders, many of the men that signed the declaration. Imperfect men, imperfect people chasing the cause of liberty. Too often, especially in this day of wokeism, we look at history and we judge it through the optics of today. That's bullshit. Medicine, for example, if we went and looked at what doctors were doing even 100 years ago, we might laugh based on what we know today. That's foolish. They were doing what they knew based on the totality of the information, of the experiences that they had. We know better now, so we do better. The amazing flow of information that we have now with devices, our ability to post things to all of these social media apps, we should be able to do better. They did it with pen and paper and with work, with dedication, with fervor, with conviction. I find it shameful that in my state of Illinois, my legislators, my governor, who work for me, think that I'm going to register my firearms while criminals continue to be let out of jail. This bill will be abolished. It will be beat back. It is important that we continue to elect. You say, elect, I don't believe in elections. One to 2% are doing the work, my friends. If 10% did the work, we'd beat all of this crap. We'd beat it time and again. Look at how many people go out and vote. It's a fraction of the public. It, we believe, we choose to believe it's all rigged. What's rigged is our mind. What's rigged is that we don't exert the effort. I personally believe that we could change who our next president is. We could change Congress. We could do all of that if we got together and got on the same page. It takes leaders, but it takes people willing to do the grunt work, to pick up that load of liberty, to carry it, the not fun work. Go read about men like Knox, Knox's noble train. I talk about him often. A lot of people don't know who Henry was. I've told this story many a time. Henry went to Fort Ticonderoga in the dead of winter from Boston, hundreds of miles across the Berkshire Mountains to collect thousands of pounds of cannon. This is before there were good roads. There was no trains. Knox's train was a train of, of wooden carts being pulled by horses and oxes across frozen rivers, creeks, and lakes, across mountain passes, where trees had to be felled by hand in brutal winter conditions, where men that were not fed properly, not clothed properly, did this thanklessly and when they got back to Boston after months of being gone, weeks of being gone, they didn't go rest. They started building bulwarks to set these cannons up. And then under the cloak of darkness, after building those bulwarks, they loaded those cannons and they drove the British out of Boston Harbor, breaking a months long siege. Men like John Glover, you know who John Glover was? John Glover was a fisherman that without John Glover, we wouldn't have crossed the Delaware River, famous Delaware crossing. Look up John Glover. There's very little that history will tell you of Glover, but when you read about Glover, you'll realize time and again, without John Glover and his men who were fishermen, we would have lost the revolution. So there's two people you can read about, Knox and Glover. Amazing, amazing men whom history has overlooked, why? Because the important political figures who often write history, they like to write about themselves. When in the end, it was these men 
who thanklessly carried that load on your and my behalf so we can sit here today and have a conversation like this. These pukes in Springfield, these pukes in your state capitol who choose to make it about politics forget that the people dying in the streets of Chicago and of other places from violent crime, it's not happening because of law-abiding citizens. That's what makes it crime, criminal, outside the law. These laws don't change that. You're not taking my guns. You're not taking my friend's guns. We're not registering our guns. In fact, we're going to continue to work to repeal this trash. I'm not going to sit idly by, and we haven't. It requires the work of many. And the sad fact, and I will say it one last time, is it's easily done. If you have a problem in your community, you need to help the good people get elected that will fight on your behalf or get elected yourself. It is easily done. Easily meaning simple, but it requires work. There are steps. I'll help you. Call me. Email. I'll talk to you how to do it. You need to mobilize people and focus on a problem and then you attack it just like that pile of dirt or firewood. It's not going to move itself. You can do it. I don't look at these types of problems like the Protect Illinois Community Act and get bent out of shape because I know we'll repeal it. Those people have a mission. I don't fault them for that. I don't waste the energy to talk about why they're doing it. They're doing it because they hate our way of life. There is no sweeter word than liberty. There is nothing greater than it because without it, nothing else can be enjoyed. Not how you worship, not who you love, not what you do for fun. I'll say this to my governor, to my legislator, it's not your business what books I read. It's not your business what I own, how I store it, what I do with it. It's not your business how I choose to protect myself. It's not your business what I consume. It's not your business what God, if any, I worship. It's not your business how I train or raise my children. It is only the business of government if our actions infringe upon the freedom or rights or liberty or well-being of others. That is its only cause. That is its only charter. Government's job is to protect our freedoms, to give us this place, not give it to us, but to Secure it so that we can continue. Government gives us nothing. All government's for is to secure our rights. That's it. It is our job to remind them of that when they step outside of those bounds. My governor just said, first of all, my sheriff here in, in my county, his name's Rob Tatelman, just got elected. He took over for the last sheriff whose campaign I helped with. Rob just came out along with many other sheriffs in the state and said, we will not enforce this illegal, unconstitutional piece of legislation. So thank you, Rob, for standing up to this. It requires men and women like Rob to do that. It requires state's attorneys and sheriffs. That is your job. See, we oftentimes just get focused on who's the president, who's the governor. It is very important that you vote for who your sheriffs are, who your state's attorneys are, and who the judges are in your community. Because those people not only enforce and uphold the law, those people oftentimes end up as state representatives, state senators, Congress people, senators, and maybe even presidents. Think about it like the bench, right? The, the minor leagues up to the majors. It is important who you elect. I'm going to get off of that topic and I'm going to close with this. That power lies in your and my hands. We the people do hold the key to the success of this republic. Nobody else. The answer has never been and never will be government. The answer definitely has never been and never will be politicians. The answer is you and your love for liberty, for this nation. When we get mired down in all the bullshit, the politics, the games, that becomes the focus. The focus needs to be one thing and one thing alone. The quest to secure liberty, not just for us, but for posterity, for those that come after us. That's a choice and that is work. There is no way around it. There is no way, zero way around that. If it worked that way, everybody would be doing it. The sad fact is most people are apathetic. I don't believe you're most people. Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to this. I am not the bastion of truth. 
The things I'm sharing with you are true, not because I say them, but they are truisms that have stood the test of time. You, you, you can move mountains, not just with your words, but with your actions, with your deeds. Facta non verba. I believe it. You know what stops violence? Counterviolence, immediate counterviolence. Be aware. Pay attention to what goes on in your community. If fate, if nature, if happenstance calls upon you to intervene in the life of somebody else for good, be that to interdict in violence or to be kind, do it. Stand up for what's right. Don't put up with this bullshit. Be well. Don't be dickheads. Tell somebody you love them. You can move mountains. <laughs>